Thank you for joining us today. My name is Anazi Piper, and I'm here to delve into the fascinating world of South Africa's minibus taxi industry. It's a vital mode of transport for South Africa's network, carrying millions of commuters daily. And joining me today is Sizwe Tlatla, who is the co-founder and director at Rudco. Rudco is a company that is just shaking things up with their innovative data and capturing services. This service promises to revolutionize the way minibus taxi owners operate, equipping them with real-time route and passenger planning. Think about it. Clearer insights into your routes, passenger flows, and potential bottlenecks, all at the tip of your fingers. Let's now explore how Rootco's data solution is transforming the industry. Hi, Suze. Thank you for taking the time to come and sit with us today. Hello, Anazi, and hello to your viewers as well. Thank you for having me here today. Awesome. Let's kick things off. So, can you tell me about the inspiration behind Rootco and the gap that you have identified in South Africa's mobility landscape? So the inspiration is very simple. You know, I come from a minibus background myself. So I, you know, I was born and, and I grew up in this environment. But you know, the whole ethos of the thing was just not understanding um, exactly what transpired during a business day. You know, so here's an owner who takes out half a million rand worth of asset and he says, you know, go with my car and come back with X amount. And that was fundamentally flawed. Um, in the same way that, you know, every shop knows how many loaves of bread are in the shop. I believe that we should be able to monetize that in a way that is meaningful so you can be able to plan your business uh, accordingly, pay installments, pay your driver accordingly, just have a streamlined business. And that was the whole inspiration about it. And that's how we found that gap is that um, it's been very difficult for um, this industry to be formalized in a meaningful way, also to... Uh, government has not been able to um, help the industry because they don't know what's happening in there. And this is why we've come in and said, listen, we're going to put it uh, straight. And that's why we developed this technology. Wow, it sounds quite interesting. How have you managed to sort of bridge that gap as Rodco between the people on the ground and the technology? How have you been able to basically transform the industry? Well, that's a very interesting question. In fact, that was one of our major pain points um, because it, it turned out to be a, a huge educational um, exercise. Um, first, we're teaching these people that, hey, you have a problem here. Um, it's not that they didn't know, but it wasn't apparent. You have a problem here. And then we had to teach them that this is the solution. There's a technology solution available out there. Because if you tell someone who's um, in their late 50s, you know, which is the bunch of this demographic is late 50s, um, uh, males, uh, also uh, female uh, taxi owners um, who don't have formal education behind them. And if you tell them that, hey, there's a machine that will give you a number of how many passengers were in your vehicle, it's a very, very foreign concept to them. I mean, we all know how tricky it was to getting our parents to ease into the whole WhatsApp. I mean, they were trying to SMS until, but now they're on WhatsApp and they had to learn that gradually. We've had to have the same thing where a lot of our owners are learning that, you know, you don't have to be arguing and fiffing and faffing with your driver. You could be halfway across the planet, look on your phone and actually see what's transpiring in your vehicle 24 hours a day. Wow. That is so exciting. Can you just explain how the technology works for someone um, who's never actually seen it um, for themselves? How, like, take us through the steps of, you know, how would you get it? How does it work? And, you know, what does it do for your business? So how it works is uh, vehicle owners are able to sign up with us. Um, and get the device installed in less than 30 minutes into their vehicle and the car's back to work. Um, and then they just download our app for free on the Play Store and the Apple iStore. It's available. Um, and the device sits in your vehicle. There's no buttons. There's no user interface. There's no 
this tamper protection, you basically need a sledgehammer to destroy it because we reverse engineered the, uh, the technology for this context, for this vehicle, for this owner, for this type of driver. We know what they do, the behavioral patterns that I've spent, you know, uh, a vast majority of my adult life, you know, with these people. I know the guys have got lots of screwdrivers, so, you know, it's not an easy thing to tamper with. And if you do try and tamper, we're the first person to receive the alert. Um, it's an artificial intelligence uh, unit that looks at people, counts them and says, how many people are here and where are they? Who's jumping on? When did they jump on? Even if it's at night, it can count people and it feeds that information back to a mobile device. And you could be anywhere in the world and know exactly what's happening in your car. Oh, wow. So you could actually literally have an iPhone or an Android and be able to still install the software. Absolutely. I mean, uh, this is what uh, our owners are currently using. You know, this is what's actually happening right now in the field is, you know, you can have an Android phone, iPhone, you know, just it's an app. You know, it's the equivalent of having Netflix, but imagine Netflix for your taxi and you go inside and you see them. <laughs> <laughs> I like the comparison between the two. And I mean, this must have been really challenging because you are working, you know, with a very specific, um, diverse group of people every single day. So how did you manage to sort of tailor that solution to meet their diverse needs? Um, and in the different contexts of the the user, how were you able to tailor that solution to meet their needs, basically? So a lot of this has culminated a many different faculties, you know, in, in science, um, from artificial intelligence, human sciences, uh, geospatial planning, all these things boil into the solution. Um, if I talk about social sciences, first thing you need to understand, how do people interact with technology? The specific colors that we used um, trigger certain emotions in the people. I mean, it's a sticky app to use. And some of our guys are in the vast majority of the day. I mean, sometimes we check the time. The guys have been in there for hours. I'm like, bro, you're not supposed to be living on the app. You can, but, you know, it's supposed to be a glance thing. But they love it so much because, and it was, it, it is engineered that way. We wanted it to be sticky. We want the people to be concerned about their businesses. So that the color palette that we've chosen and we've, we've also made that user interface incredibly easy. Um, it's like an iPad. You, you don't need a manual to start using it. The moment you pick it up, you just know how to use it. It's so intuitive. Um, the buttons, I mean, we made sure that there's four different pages. The first page being your landing page, your tracking page, and the inside page, not 1,000 buttons. And that was one of the ways that we had to do is uh, with my background in advertising and media, I was able to um, I've worked on some very, very wonderful campaigns around the world where we build um, uh, uh, marketing um, that is very, very intuitive and people want to use it even. Um, and this is what I brought into um, Rootco is um, the, all that kind of engineering and the hardware side, you know, it was developed locally. So this is not a plug and play solution. I mean, a lot of people that bring artificial intelligence into South Africa, um, you know, they get something from America, from China, and the first thing, very painful lesson that they learn is that, you know, that stuff can't read these faces in this context, this these tones, these dukes, these face masks, and really things that are very unique to us. And we've had to actually physically train it. In fact, it was trained by a black woman in South Africa, um, very, very, very brilliant engineer. In fact, frighteningly brilliant. I mean, it's stuff that's happening here is just cutting edge, man, um, that developed this artificial intelligence. And we continue to work with the, with that Scumworks program in our lab um, continually. The hardware locally developed. This is not off the shelf. Some of our brilliant engineers that came up and said, listen, this is what it looks like to make sure that unit is tamper-proof, to make sure that, you know, because... When we tamper-proof these things, we're also protecting the owner and we're also protecting the driver from disputes. Um, and we're also protecting the owner from theft, that if the car is stolen, the guys who stole the car need to make an extra effort at destroying this other tracking device as well. Um, so all these faculties of information and data science and human sciences 
uh, and visual stimuli come together to this boiling point to make this wonderful product that we call Root Cup. Wow, I'm just glad that you were able to mention bravely that it's a woman behind all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear it. But yeah, you're certainly um, doing quite a lot of change and innovation in the transport sector. And as a, an entrepreneur that is leading the change, what has been the most rewarding aspect of your journey? Um, so there's quite a few uh, very rewarding. Um, is first uh, one is just creating an African solution for an African problem. It's, it's a homegrown solution. And the second one, without going into too deep into it, is is just the the ordinary uh, mama, the ordinary dad who doesn't have the energy to be fighting and arguing, coming back to me verbally and saying, "Thank you so much for the solution." Um, finally, I have peace of mind. Finally, I understand what's happening in my business. I mean, the guys are bleeding big money on average because they just don't know what's happening. And just seeing that um, take it uh, take away from them, and also seeing um, the opportunities that exist um, with uh, a lot of local authorities talking about town planning. That if they have this kind of information harvested, they are better able to you know plan you know town uh, water. That hey, we're seeing a lot of people coming out of this area at this time. Maybe let's increase the piping here. The electricity demand might be larger here. And you can build a town better based on how people are interacting with. And we have all that data harvested via our elaborate network of taxis with these people that are being transported to work every day. And how, that's, that's very interesting. But how do you, um, or what advice I would want to say, would you want to give someone who's also leaning towards an entrepreneurial route and aiming to create the same type of positive change that you have created for Africa's mobility sector. What advice would you give them if they were to start today? Um, you know, uh, it, this question it gets touted a lot. And in fact, I used to hate the answers that I used to get as a young engineer all those many years ago of, you know, the whole perseverance. You have to just keep going and passion. You know, but coming of age, you know, you come to learn that these are fundamentals. You have to be passionate about this thing because you're going to find many, many days where you just want to give up. Um, I mean, we've had huge stumbling blocks. You know, you bleed money, falling into a, a dark hole and you don't know if it's going to come out and technology that doesn't exist. I mean, when I started this thing in 2012, the technology simply wasn't there. You know, we, we were connecting the dots, um, looking backwards, uh, everything now starts to make sense. But if you go into it, connecting the dots, looking forward, it just won't make sense. You just have to have this blind faith and be passionate what you are to, and what you're going to do and just trust the process because um, you can only connect the dots looking backwards and saying, shit, well, excuse my language, but you say, wow, I, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I did that um, because it's, it's a lot of grueling work and we can't uh, highly quote it. Passion is number one. The labor of love, and and yeah, and just you know, putting yourself in in a very very educated um, spaces where you can you know hone your craft and mastery, you know, master your craft, be the best at your craft. Um, don't do it because you know you want the fancy things. Do it because you actually want to be here, and that's the only way I think you can last in these uh, long journeys of developing uh, technologies of the future. <laughs> Wow, I like that advice. And I, I like the trust the process. Trust the process and passion definitely is the key driver to success. Um, Sizwe, you've mentioned so many things today. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Um, one thing I want to ask before we close our conversation is why smarter mobility? Smarter mobility um, presents um, an idea where we can consolidate all these ideas from all the different nodes and all the different sectors on South Africa and have all these brilliant minds come together to create these African solutions for African problems that I keep touting. Um, I believe in homegrown solutions 
and I believe in collaboration and smarter mobility, having had um, a wonderful opportunity to be in that room last year at the conference um, absolutely showed me how all these brilliant minds came together um, with this common cause uh, of smarter mobility in Africa, because it is absolutely possible. We have the youngest population on the planet uh, and a booming population at that, and these problems need to be addressed urgently. Um, and this is the brilliant start to it. And I was just listening to you talk about um, how much talent there is here. We have homegrown solutions. What other opportunities do you think lie ahead for mobility in Africa? Um, for mobility in Africa, it's these connected um, uh, transport systems. There's no other way. This um, whole thing of, you know, one mode of transport for every race, it's, it's unsustainable. Africa needs to look at connected solutions where I should be able to jump on a, you know, a plane and arrive in Nairobi on the same ticket, you know, that same bus will take me to Lagos and that small taxi will take me to my official, uh, uh, final destination. Where I left in SA, I left on one ticket and this connected node system that is digitally powered is what's gonna drive Africa to, uh, and create this economic zone of free trade, because free trade starts with transport before the goods move. If people are moving, that's the real free trade. Um, and then once you unlock the people's movement ability, free trade becomes, you know, uh, an almost a, 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 a non-brainer, you know. So um, I think that's what should be key to this African is, uh, context is uh, if they can allow the smarter mobility. Smarter mobility opens up free trade. Get the mobility going first and then the free trade uh, becomes uh, a second to none. I couldn't agree with you more, Sizwe. What is your last parting statement that you want to leave our audience with today? The last parting um, uh, sentiment that I want to leave with the audience is that um, we should embrace technology. I'm listening to a lot of people who are worried that you know artificial intelligence is here to steal uh, people's jobs and this and that. But you know, when I was very young, I remember speaking to my fifth grade teacher, and and I still hold on to the sentiment because I believe in it, and I've listened to all of the great minds still talk about the sentiment that resonated with that fifth grade sentiment my teacher said to me, and she said, in the future, machines will allow mankind to have more time to spend with their families. And we should diversify more into learning how to harness machines so that humans can be able to do the things that matter, um, which is you know, family, love, and all these things that actually make us uh, uh, greater than what we are and be able to explore, you know, our inner abilities and technology is going to be the only way. There's no purpose in life in, you know, just slaving away until the, the very end. And it's, it's machines, it's artificial intelligence that's going to get us there into um, not almost a, a stagnant place, but to be able to express ourselves in, in more what we want as a, as a, as a species. Allowing humans to do what humans do best, being human. I like that one. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Suze, for your insightful and valuable perspective. It was such a pleasure getting to learn more about Rodco's innovative work in the minibus taxi industry. And we definitely hope to see more of your work out there, changing and influencing the development of Smarter Mobility Africa. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Liz. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at this year's Smart Mobility uh, Conference. Um, it's going to be so exciting. Last year was an absolute blast. And I can imagine uh, this one, uh, this year is going to be of epic proportions. Definitely going to step it up a level. And that's a wrap from me, Anazi Piper. Remember to subscribe to our weekly SMA newsletter by visiting the smartmobilityafrica.com. Uh, slash news and keep out a look for our content on hashtag SMA news 
Also, if you're not already following us, please do follow us on our socials and on LinkedIn. Hashtag SMA for all, hashtag SMA Summit, and hashtag New Urban Era. We'll see you soon.